Hi y'all, welcome to my kitchen. I'm just getting ready to use my turned coffee scoop to make some make some coffee. It's a fun little project. Um, uh, it makes a great gift. You can make these things in, in different sizes. It's good to make a bowl that will hold about two tablespoons or about one eighth cup. You can even make, make the handle long so it will fit in the down to reach down to the bottom of a deep container or you can make it shorter so it'll fit inside the container uh, your choice so let's get to making one okay let's get started uh, like I said before, this is a great project for a novice turner. It doesn't take a lot of skills or an experienced turner because it does make a, a, a ter tremendous gift that the recipient will really be happy to have. Uh, in case you're interested, I did write an article on doing these two-piece coffee scoops for wood turning design back in August 2011. You can download that from, uh, from my website, which is under the description. Here's the um, scoop I made uh, in the main picture of that article out of Wenge and uh, Purple Heart. Uh, I want to show you some different alternatives to checking up the piece of wood. First thing we're going to do, we're going to start off with a, t a piece of wood. Uh, you might make it, uh, let's see if I can get a close up of this, a block about two inches by two inches by three and a quarter if you're going to put it in a chuck and you're going to turn around between centers it might look something like this. And let's talk briefly about design. Uh, gluing up, you, know, you can glue up a piece of wood uh, with, with multiple pieces. Um, and, and that adds, some, uh, adds something to it. Or you can turn it out of one, one piece. Uh, here's a failed one out of Ambrosia ma uh, Maple because of the uh, beetle, beetle holes in it. It wasn't real good except uh, a sample to show in a, in, a, in a video. What I wanted to talk about very briefly is different methods of, of chucking that. Once you turn it between centers, and, and we'll get on with that in a moment, you can either put it in a chuck after you turn it between centers, like this and we turn a tenon to fit our chuck. Or you can simply use a glue block and glue the piece of wood that fits in the chuck or onto a glue block onto a face plate if you don't have a chuck because you don't have to have a chuck to do this this project and that's that's what I want to show you. You can glue it on on here this uh, block of block of wood this is the block we're going to use today about two inches square. You can glue it on here with some thick CA or just as an experiment, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use this threaded block so I don't have to use a chuck and glue this, uh, uh, fasten this on with wood turner's tape. And this is a very thick tape. It's got some cloth in it to hold it. It's about eight years, nine years old. It's, it's getting pretty old. But uh, if you clamp it real good, it has amazing strength. And I just want to use this approach just to show you how strong uh, wood turner's tape can be. This is a lot different than carpet tape. I'm going to pull out my pocket knife and we're going to just... This is the challenge with the tape is getting the getting a double stick. I put two, it's about one inch wide. I'm using uh, two pieces on here so I can get full strength. One piece might hold it but hey, let's not take any chances. And we're just going to kind of eyeball this on center. And here's the real trick to getting the strength with this is we're going to we're going to clamp this and let it stay for about 10 minutes under clamping pressure and that's where we get the strength and where people that have had failures with this frequently they just got impatient and they just slapped it on there and started working. So we're going to come back in 10 minutes. Okay I noticed when I was getting ready to do this I see I've got a little bit of a nick on here so it's time to Dress this. This is soft metal. It's good, good idea if you got dings in your tool rest and you're cast iron or steel, take them out. Just use a draw file, a few strokes. And then I like to touch it up a little bit of about 220 grit. And it doesn't hurt to take a little bit of candle paraffin, which I keep nearby, to kind of rub on it. Okay, we're ready to begin. Put on my safety glasses. We've waited 10 minutes. We're going to thread this block on. And while we rough it out, 
I'm going to go ahead and use a little tailstock support. Never a bad idea. Make sure everything is secure. Turn the lathe around at least one time, the spindle. I'm going to use a roughing gouge. Okay. Now as I normally do when I when I'm going to hollow something even with a spindle gouge, I'm going to use my uh, quick hand drill. And we're going to go down about uh, about that first mark. Reposition the tool rest. We're going to face this off using my 3 8 inch spindle gouge just the tool rest so you're cutting on exact center going to come across about like that at about uh, I guess you could say about 2 o'clock light cuts Brace this as I make that entry cut. That's good. Take out the tail stock. And now we're going to ease into this and raise tourists just a hair. Ease into it. Light cuts. Slow cuts. Let the tool and lathe do the work. like very nice do two things I'm going to use a square end uh, square end uh, box scraper to come down that wall a little bit and then I'm going to come across the bottom with a round round nose scraper Let's thin the wall and we're going to come across the bottom. I come up off just a little bit for a shear cut. Small, tiny shavings, get it kind of get into that rounded corner. Okay. I think that looks good. I'm gonna transfer the inside to the outside. So we don't make the inside larger than the outside. We're going to leave about an eighth inch at the market, an eighth inch at the bottom. And since it's in grain, we want to leave a little bit of strength there. Come back with a pencil to and that 
that's going to be the bottom. I've still got a little bit of flat area to deal with. We'll take it, take care of that in the final shaping. Um, I'm going to go ahead and, and sand the uh, inside here and uh, start shaping outside of the bowl. But I'm going to sand off camera. Okay, I should have gone ahead and drilled the hole before I finished sanding on the inside because you'll get you have a tendency to get some tear out. But I'll go back and fix that. So now we're going to mark where the hole is. So you want to look look at your uh, piece to see where the grain is and get it where it's in this case prominent grains here and here on the sides. I've got this flat area that'll help me orient this thing, and I'm going to put the handle kind of near the top. So I mark it. And I want to give it just a little bit of a uh, an incline or a rake rake position. So I will tilt this just a little bit, just a little bit, as I cut this quarter using a quarter inch um, brad point. Okay, now we're going to finish shaping the outside and, and part it off. Uh, it's, and I'm not going to part all the way down. I'm just going to put a uh, parting cut to kind of mark where the bottom of this is going to be. Again, very gentle cuts. Come back a little bit because I don't want it to bind. And because of the pressure we're going to put on here, I'd feel more comfortable if I had a little tailstock support. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my Nova Live system, which I really like. It'll just give it a little extra margin of error, margin of safety here. Now we gotta put just a couple little V grooves here for the burn mark. Using my pyramid tool. Get the tail, the tool rest completely out of the way. I have various uh, gauges for these burn wires. Gonna ramp the speed up a little bit. This is not turning, so I better go up a little bit more. So I give it that little bit of support. So I'm going to use the smallest one, and I just lean it over in the back, get a little extra friction. And now all I've got to do is finish parting that off. And then we'll use this as a jam chuck to do any uh, uh, cleanup on the bottom. So I think I'm going to take this down a little bit. It's down to less than a quarter of an inch. I'm going to go ahead and release this tailstock support. Slow this down just a bit. Close to a thousand. Do this with one hand. Very lightly. Leaving a little bit of a nub. Okay. So I've got a little tear out. Uh, but I've left the bottom fairly th uh, thick enough to handle that. So now all i got to do is make a jam chuck. Perfect. I'm going to take
take the spindle gouge, take a nice clean passing cut here. Okay, I've got rid of the torn grain. All I gotta do is sand it off and then we'll start working on the handle. I'm gonna use this uh, threaded glue block again, so I've gotta pry this off. This will give you some idea of just how firmly it's on there. I'm gonna use a skew, find a little bit of a tiny little gap and just get a wedge going. Well, that didn't work. Let's try again. Take a mallet and just kind of ah, it's beginning, to to give. it's beginning to give just a little bit, and then once it releases, it just pries loose once it gets to going. And there you go. Okay, I got a piece of walnut uh, between centers with a very uh, small. Uh, step, step center here. Uh, design, you can make them different ways. Um, large end, small end. Uh, the only thing I would suggest is make the handle end the further away you get from the bowl larger and go from larger to small, similar to a finial. Uh, I like to put a little bit of bead uh, down where it's going to join. And on the round side, in the article, I, I talked about trying to measure this and get it exactly flush on the inside. Since then, I found a, a better technique, and that's go ahead and make it round and have it project in. I don't know if you can see that, and it actually makes a design feature, and it's a lot easier. But I still like to have a bead where it, it, it joins. I frequently uh, put a tenon on here and put this in a chuck so I can measure that end against the uh, uh, bowl to make sure I've got a good fit. But in this case, I want to show you how you can do the whole thing between centers. And when, uh, when I take it down, I'm going to put it inside a soft center while I finish uh, turning this, this end off. So the, the tricky part is measuring that to down to about a quarter of an inch. So I have a little bit of a a gauge to do that. Remembering that this is always larger than the hole, so you get it down to this size and then you still got to tweak it a little bit. So we'll use a parting tool for that. I'm going to use my thin parting tool to get that just right. Okay, if you got accurate calibers, of course, you can always calibrate the thing. So just put that on point. I like these digital calipers. I use this a lot for threading. They're not ter terribly expensive. This is a Harbor Freight model. So you can see, with even though it fits a quarter inch wrench, it's still a little large. So we're just going to...
I like to have a very slight taper so it forces its way on in case you overshoot your mark just a little bit. Now I want to go ahead and turn this bead before we part that, that off. Okay, I think that's probably about the right distance. I'm going to go ahead and start cutting into this to, to part it off, and then I'm going to put that in my uh, soft, soft touch. So, easier for me to use a skew for this. They will be cut. Speed down just a touch. And we're just going to round this off with the features so it won't have to stand much. And now, I'm going to hold this with my left hand. I think it's off. So I'm going to cut those last few fibers so they don't tear out. And then we can just use a little bit of sandpaper. I'll clean this up at the end, but we're just going to sand that a little bit. Do a trial fit here. And that's, that's perfect. That's perfect. Now, here's where we go back to. Go back to that Nova Live Center. I'm going to use this uh, nylon soft touch. These are stubby little number two Morse tapers. So what this allows me to do is actually continue to support it. Kind of like a mandrel saver for you pin turners. And don't want to get it too tight. We don't want to bend this or put pressure on it. But now we can finish shaping the handle with good support. I think we're going to make this a long handle. I kind of like, like this one, so I think that's how I'm going to basically shape it, about that same length. Mark the end. So now it's just a question of taking it down. My skew's not sharp enough, let me hone it a few times. You can't have your skew too sharp, you don't want to wait till it gets dull, you want to wait, you really want to hone it when it can be sharper, and that's what we're doing. I like to lock this under my elbow like this, and just a few strokes. This is about a 600 grit hone. After a few honings, you got to take it back to the grinder. Let's see if that doesn't make it a little bit better. Make that at the end. I'm going to sand this a little bit. We're going to put a couple of big grooves, put a couple of burn marks, and we'll be done. Okay, just a few uh, finishing remarks. Um, when you go to fit this, if you find out that this is a little large, I had this in my earlier tips and, and tricks uh, uh, video, a plumber's reamer works wonders for just 
enlarging that just a little bit. These are not expensive. You can, uh, this is 5 eighths. Most of them tend to be a half inch. I like the 5 eighths a little better. Um, as a glue, I prefer not to use CA glue for something like this in case they drop it. Sometimes it gets brittle. Uh, I find a water resistant glue, glue such as Type Bond 3 to be a good solution for that. Put it in there, uh, clean it up real good. Uh, in terms of finish, uh, finish of your choice, I tend to use antique, Minwax antique oil for almost everything. I put about two coats on here and then I might buff it up to give it a little bit of a shine. Uh, it won't last long when you start using coffee scoop, but it looks nice when they take it out of their, uh, their gift bag. Uh, if you want a more of a, a treen type of finish, uh, a treen that's made from a tree, that's small things like kitchenware products like scoops, uh, Mahoney's Walnut Oil Utility Finish tends to be a, a pretty good one. It gives it a more of a matte, but it, like a lot of people say, shiny cells, so sometimes antique oil uh, is a little bit better. Uh, in terms of the final size of the handle, let me just tell you how big it is. Uh, this is uh, just a little bit less than 5 eighths. And uh, size lengthwise, it's about just under, uh, just about 6 inches, about 6 inches. So I hope this has been a good project for you. Till later, stay safe. Have fun.